Oh, hey! Top of the morning to ya. Why does this sound familiar? Anyway, I am finally showing my face on screen. My adult face. And that is how I'm going to be doing my reviews from now on. Yeah, I said reviews. I could have said review, but yeah, that's not cool. <clears throat> so, from now on, my reviews will be talk spoken by a live meaty person. Enjoy the show. Osmosis Jones has a very interesting concept going for it. It holds the idea of an anthropomorphic city that is set inside the human body. It's not just animated. It's also got live action in the mix. The live action portion center on Bill Murray, who plays a zookeeper who copes with his problems, such as his dead wife, through overeating, and a lack of hygiene. Inside his body is the animated portions, which is the main focus of the film, centered on overzealous white blood cell cop Osmosis Jones, voiced by Chris Rock. He teams up with a pill that Bill Murray takes called Drix, voiced by David Hyde Pierce, to destroy a virus named Thrax, voiced by Lawrence Fishburne, who got into the body after it swallowed a boiled egg that was wrestled out of a monkey's mouth at the zoo. Yeah, the film starts off and it's already pretty gross. That live action scene at the beginning is just where it starts. Bill Murray eats a bad egg and we get Osmosis Jones already going after germs even against protocol. What a contrast between live action and animation in terms of how good it actually is. Well, let's start with the good. The animation looks great. It feels all smooth, and this is the actually interesting stuff. The way the plot runs, you can actually pay attention because the well-done animation complements what we're watching. The only character in the whole film that's the computer model is Trix. He's a good-looking model and he blends in pretty well with the rest of the characters, though not perfectly. But the live action scenes are what ruin it just enough to stop the film from being above average. The problem is not exactly Bill Murray or any of the other actors, he isn't a bad actor, but the problem is the gross out humor that's incorporated into the film. You might say, oh it's a film about the human body, don't you think you're being a little cruel here? But even then, maybe they could tone that stuff down a little? Do we really need a close-up of a pimple being popped? Do we really need Bill Murray to show his dirty foot to his daughter? If these moments make you a little green, I apologize, but that's just how the film was made. It was released in 2001, so these moments are somewhat expected. Not to this degree. The film was initially rated PG-13 for crude language and bodily humor. The film was edited because Warner Brothers wanted a more family-friendly audience, so its rating changed to PG for just bodily humor. The adjustments may or may not have been a bad move. Even without the gross out nonsense, these live action scenes are kind of bland and not all that engaging. With the story, its concept, as I've said, is a really good one. The story formed around it may not be the most original, but screw it, they're anthropomorphizing the inner workings of the human body. Also, they're the love interest character, the mayor's secretary, Leah, voiced by Brandy Norwood who barely has any real romantic chemistry with the main character. In fact, there's only one scene with Ozzy flirting with her before the final battle he kisses her full on the lips. Then at the end, they get together with what seems like not enough screen time to justify it. Kinda like a few other family comedies that force in the romance even if it didn't seem necessary. Why do so many films do this? It's only a minor thing in this case, but I might as well get that out of my system while I can. But anyway, I do like the buddy cop ordeal with Ozzy and Drix not working well together at first. But soon, they're just fine. The way they interact reminds me of Toy Story. In fact, when Drix made his first appearance in the movie, I already felt the Buzz Lightyear vibes because of the way it was designed. It's yet another one of those duo films with polar opposite characters cooperating to accomplish the main objective. The tried but true formula that continues to this day, though it admittedly mixed with some hit or miss humor. Anime portions do have moments of gross out humor, but nowhere near as painful as what we see in live action. When the film was initially released, it was a flop at the box office, only making $14 million on a $70 million budget. But it soon sold well with its release on DVD and got a spin off TV show called Ozzy and Drix that ran for two seasons and 13 episodes each. 
Even then, reception on the film was pretty mixed. Some people like it and some people don't. As for myself, it's not a bad movie at all. It could have been great or at least fairly decent. It had great animation, wonderful voice talents, and a cool concept. But it gets ruined by the overdose of gross out humor and the live action scenes further drive that point to the center of the earth. So, I form my opinion that the film is average. There's certainly better buddy cop films to watch, like Zootopia, which came out 15 years later. But if you need to watch one that's centered in the human body, why not? <laughs>